But we do begin with those devastating twisters that ripped through at least three states. The swirling storm systems spawned a number of lethal tornadoes across Alabama, killing at least nine people there. Our Steve Osinsami is in the hard hit area with the latest. The tornadoes and deadly winds that cut through the southeast have left a trail of heartache. This was my mom's house, y'all. My sister lived in it. Alabama Governor Kay Ivey declared a state of emergency for six counties after at least 23 reported tornadoes were seen in her state. Look at that tornado. In Selma, seen from the sky, this is what a tornado left of one neighborhood. And a few minutes later, in rural Otaga County, authorities confirmed that the same storm damaged or destroyed 40 to 50 homes. I just never thought I'd be in that kind of no, no. situation, but I know nobody does. Georgia was up next, where schools closed early to get kids home happen? safely. Near Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport in Atlanta, a confirmed tornado tore through a warehouse with workers inside who were praying for their lives. The door started to blow open because the wind was picking up, and then it flew all the way open, and I was trying to close it. The power went out, and then I just hear crashing. The storm flipped cars outside of Walmart and brought flooding rains to the region. We have seen... Um, possibly 20 to 30 houses that have been destroyed from the tornado. This same storm system also left piles of ruin in central Kentucky. And in parts of Tennessee, the winds were strong enough to bring down the side of this brick building and crush any vehicle that stood in the way. The wind was blowing so hard today, you couldn't even hear the car alarm go off when the first car got smashed. This is what's left of one of those homes in Otaga County, Alabama, where several homes are destroyed and a number of people did not make it through the night. As always, there are these little signs of life that you see here that remind you what's really at stake. And I found this holy Bible here that was lying in the dirt. You know, there's prayers that are going to be up for this community tonight. The home that was here was moved about 100 feet off its foundation and then blown to bits directly behind me. Today, the power crews are out. They're trying to restore power to this area and they're going to need it. Now that the storm has passed, it's gotten really cold here and the storm now continues to move north and east. Kira. Steve, thank you so much. And someone who knows firsthand just how bad these storms are is Director of Field Operations at the Alabama Emergency Management Agency, Ricky Adams. Ricky, so glad uh, you're joining us again. We know this has been a difficult time. Can you give us an assessment of the damage now and the extent of, of where you are in Alabama? Sure. I mean, the damage is quite extensive across the state. We probably have some 30 counties that have been impacted to one degree or the other. And speaking with Ernie Baggett, who is the Ottawa County uh, EMA director, they had their seventh fatality confirmed in that county. Uh, we've spoken with the uh, officials over in Selma and Dallas County. And to this date, we're just 24 hours after the storm. There are still no reports of any fatalities, but multiple injuries. So are you afraid that you could get reports of fatalities and more injuries as you're still in the recovery phase and assessing all the damage, Ricky? Well, that's always a concern, uh, of course, and that's what the search and rescue personnel and first responders keep first on their mind. But one of the questions that we talked to Selma about was if they had any reports of any missing individuals or unaccounted uh, people, and the answer was no at this point. So that's very encouraging. I know you're concerned, too, about down power lines, just looking at these pictures of the devastation. And folks are going to want to return home, but it, it's dangerous. So what are you telling them? And, and what are, how, how have you been able to look at properties and assess if it is safe for them to return home to their neighborhoods? The assessments are very uh, tedious. Uh, as you said, the debris is quite an obstacle and also down power lines, but the power crews are doing a great job uh, and the roads are slowly being cleared, but it has slowed the process up a little bit, but it, it will improve over the next couple of days. If you think about it, we're only 24 hours after the storm.